my name is Belgica, and today I have my friend Jackie. We're going to be talking about self-tape auditions. She is also an actress. She's been in Stranger Things, NCIS, New Orleans, and so, so many other things. So I'm excited to get her perspective and just her thoughts and ideas on self-tape auditions. Hi, Jackie. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, if people want to reach out to you, do you want to tell us about your consulting business, where they can find you on social yeah. media? Sure, sure. So um, I've got a website. It's called JackieDallas.com. Easy peasy. Um, I'm on almost all the social medias as Jackie Dallas or on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on at Jax Dallas, J-A-X-D-A-L-L-A-S. Um, I do have an actor consulting page on Facebook. It's Jackie Dallas Consultant. And it's basically I meet with actors who have any sort of questions about getting started in the business, um, how to get to the next level. Maybe they've been doing a lot of this and they want to transition to that. Should they join SAG? What if I don't live in LA? Any kind of questions that you might have, I do. I used to do in person. Now I'll probably end up doing a lot of Zoom meetings, but um, yeah, anything and everything regarding acting and working in the industry, how to get jobs, agents. Okay, so we're going to be talking about everything. If we miss anything, if you guys have additional questions about anything, just put it in the comments and maybe we'll make another one in the future or we'll, we'll just reply to that comment. So starting from the top, what is a self-tape audition and how can you get a request? So a self-tape audition is just like any other audition. It's just that you tape it yourself. So you would get the request for a self-tape audition for any kind of audition that you or your agent or your manager might have submitted you for, whether it's through Actors Access or Casting Network or Backstage or any number of casting platforms, is basically just a self-taped audition that you would submit for the casting directors and the producers to look over in consideration of hiring you. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of jobs can you usually get from those self-tape auditions? And on top of that, is it possible to do a self-tape audition to get an agent or a manager? Sure, sure. Um, I think as of right now, like you could do a self-tape for any number of acting jobs. You can do it for, you know, TV or, or film. You can do it for commercial work. Um, a lot of first round auditions are usually on tape nowadays. I think it's becoming a new standard for a variety of reasons. Um, I think when it comes to getting an agent or getting a manager, I think a lot of them still prefer to have an in-person session just so that they can get a sense of who you are and, you know, really get to talk to you and um, delve into your personality and what your goals are and everything else. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if moving forward, especially after this period here, if more and more agents and managers are even going to start doing their first rounds through tape as well. And what about open calls? What are open calls? So the main difference between an open call versus a self-tape audition is that an open call is not necessarily with a specific role or a project in mind. So with most auditions, they're like, oh, we need this so-and-so character for this so-and-so film. Um, you'll get a set of sides, you'll get exactly what they're looking for. An open call tends to be more of anything and everything, let's see what you bring to the table. And if they like you, they're like, perfect, we got the perfect role for you. Um, uh, for you for something in the future that you would be perfect for. <laughs> yes, exactly. So what about self-tape auditions, self auditions versus in-person auditions? A lot of that, from my experience, has been kind of market-based and also casting director preference. Mm -hmm. As it was, um, I know a lot of the Southeast market was everything was on self-tape, you know, absolutely everything was self-tape in uh, like Atlanta, New Orleans, everything in the Southeast. And it makes sense because it's such a broad market. It's kind of hard to ask an actor who maybe lives in Miami to drive all the way to Atlanta for an audition. So they'll do everything on tape. LA tends to be a little bit more in person. Of course, who knows after all of this, um, yeah. certain casting directors, even here in LA prefer self-tapes the first round. Um, or every round even. So pros and cons, you can certainly go through a lot more actors when it's a tape, just because you, you know, you can skip the formalities, you can skip the highs and the goodbyes and the check-ins. Um, mm -hmm. You literally just stop and play, stop and play. Um, the downside of it is you do lose a little bit of the personal, you know, interactions yeah. and the communications and also the ability to redirect, you know, maybe a casting director sees you and says, wow, she's really, really good. That's 
that's an amazing audition, but it's not quite what we're looking for. A self-tape, you do lose the ability. They have to see past what is just in front of them. Guide themselves and just be able to read what the email mm -hmm. said instead of having feedback. Right. That's one of the things that I really pride myself in as an actress mm -hmm. is that I can receive feedback really well when I'm in an audition and they say, mm -hmm. oh, how about play it like this? And I'm like, oh, that sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Let's do it. Versus at home when I'm, you know, just with my own ideas, do as mm -hmm. best as I can. And then I don't have that feedback, which is why mm -hmm. I personally prefer in-person auditions, mm -hmm. but I mean, self-tape auditions, of course, I always, cool, we're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. this is the only opportunity I have right now because we aren't doing in-person auditions. Yeah, um, I think everyone has their own preference. Like, I'm the opposite. I love self-tape auditions because really? a, like, inner neurotic person can just do it over and over and over again. Oh, so like, yeah. Perfect. And you talked a little bit about how it's going to maybe be in the future. How common are self-tape auditions in your experience? They're already really common is the thing. Like I said, everything in the Southeast mm -hmm. is already on tape, at least for the first round, if not the entire process of it. In LA, it was a little bit more in-person auditions, I'd say my experience was maybe like 20% self-tape, 80% in-person. It really depends on the casting director, and it depends on if you're going for union work versus non-union work, if you're kind of at this entry co-star level versus a series regular level. I mean, there's a lot of variables, but it is very common. Even if you get an audition in person, but you can't make it, sometimes they'll ask for a self-tape in place because they really want to see you. For sure, yeah. And that's something that I've done a lot, especially if it's a, a play or mm -hmm. a student film, something like that. I usually, if I can't make the audition, I usually ask them, because it doesn't hurt to ask, especially in a small production, yes. is like, can I do a self-tape audition? And nine out of 10, times in my experience they're like sure like why not you know we'd love yeah. to, to mm -hmm. see what you have what do you need in order to film a self-tape auditions so start with what you have because everyone is starting at different you know different levels of their acting career and there's absolutely no need to go out and spend so much money on so many different things right you you grow with your career so your basic things that you're going to want to have is a camera tripod backdrop and lights. Okay, let's break those down real quick. Camera, your cell phone is great, especially if you have like a more recent model of a smartphone. iPhones are great. The later Androids are great. Google phones are great. I mean, most of these phones shoot in 4K already as it is, which is already going to be more than what you need for a self-tape audition. So your cell phone is totally fine. Have a more fancy DSLR, go for it. There was a question about whether a GoPro is, um, you know, recommended. If that's all you have, use it. I would pref personally prefer a cell phone over a GoPro yeah. just because the GoPro tends to kind of have this fish lens, warpy on the perimeters kind of a view, which is a little distracting and it can distort the image a little bit. If that's all you have, I mean, that's totally fine. I say a tripod because it's always most professional to have your cell phone, one, at the height that you need it for, stable. So someone holding a cell phone is gonna still have a little bit of a shake to it, and it just kind of takes away from the, uh, from the viewer like really being able to pay attention to you. A tripod is really gonna solve that problem. Also, you, you know, don't have to deal with like trying to balance it just perfectly on a chair against oh my gosh. and like, <laughs> you know, all in there, right? Like traveling in a hotel room trying to like, do the self tape. Yeah. Um, that tripod is just makes it so much easier. Backdrop. Backdrop is uh, super important and it's one of the few th easiest things you could do to differentiate yourself as from an amateur from a from an amateur to a professional. Casting directors don't want to see your bedroom or your living room or your kitchen, you know. They want to see basically this. They want to see a very clean, very neutral um in a nice soft flattering color tone like blue um that's what they want to see in the background just so that they can focus on you and not like oh what are they cooking in the background the cleaner and the more neutral your background is the better and you don't have to spend a lot of money on it this right here is a king-sized flat sheet that i bought for like ten dollars at walmart mm -hmm. up packs in the corners like done and the last thing that you're going to want is good lights if you are in a room with great natural lighting and you kind of know what time of day is perfect, shoot then, you know. I right now don't have any artificial lights. This is just window lighting that I have in my room right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm facing the window so that the light is front facing me. Um, that's free, guys. 
if you want to bump it up a notch and uh, you know maybe you work during the day and you want to be able to film at night some soft box lights are really cheap and easy um, relatively cheap and easy on Amazon I think you can get a set of two boxes bulbs and stands for like 40 to 60 dollars depending on like what brand you want to get if you want to go a step further and you want to do something like getting editing software or getting a microphone or a lav that's entirely up to you but once again you can use the phone audio and you can use something free like windows movie maker or imovie filmora is a free um, editing software that you can get online so Work with what you have, build from there. What about a reader? That's something that's very common because sometimes you'll have a monologue and then sometimes you'll have a scene. So do you need a reader? Does the gender matter? Can you record it yourself? So a reader is an absolute necessity, I will say. Um, or at least a voice reading the other person's lines. The mm -hmm. casting director, your, they want to see your reactions just as much as your actions. You know, your dialogue versus your listening skills, it's all equally important to them. So they don't want to hear you have a dialogue and then silence and then dialogue again. They want to hear you actually having a conversation. Um, anyone can be your reader. Ideally, it'll be someone with a little bit of acting capability. So you, it gives you something to feed off of. Mm -hmm. But if you have a roommate, if you have a parent, if you have a spouse, Maybe they're not an actor. Maybe you're at your mom's house. Have them at least read um, just so you do have a little bit of that back and forth. Gender does not matter. Age does not matter. A lot of times when you go into a professional casting office, your reader is not going to be the same age and gender as the person that you're supposed to be reading against anyways. Um, as far as recording yourself goes, I would say that's probably a last resort. Mm -hmm. um, it can be distracting to hear the same voice on both sides of yeah. it. I've heard casting directors say that they don't care much for that. Um, there's a couple of workarounds for that. If you're able to get the timing down and, you know, really practice and rehearse and do that really well, get a voice changer. You know, you can download an app for free, change your voice. Um, as long as it doesn't sound like a serial killer on the phone, I don't imagine <laughs> that would be distracting. Um, there's a lot of really great apps as well. We Audition is a great app um, with other actors that will help you with your audition, whether it's reading or rehearsing. If you're an actor, it's very likely that you know actors. So definitely have like a self-tape audition buddy, somebody that you're like, hey, I'll help you out during your self-tape auditions. If I'm available, will you help me out when you are available? Absolutely. I think having a buddy for that is really, really great. It doesn't have to be in person, like you said. You know, yeah. we, you can do it over... Um, over Zoom or over Skype or, you know, if you have a, if you're recording on a computer or recording on your phone, have your laptop set up and have their voice in the background. Okay, so now some of the more technical questions mm -hmm. of where, where should you be framed? Where should your eyeline be? And I know it's different for different types of casting. So mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. ahead and what to wear, props, all of that. Yeah, yeah. So these are all like the nitpicky details, right? And it's always going to be a case by case basis. So the most important thing is read the directions and follow them because every office is going to be different about what they're asking for. Um, as a general rule of thumb, your framing should be what I call like a medium tight shot. Kind of what I'm, I, I hope my video is the same as yours. Yeah. <laughs> I think how I'm framing myself right here would be the ideal frame for a headshot. Same as yours. Like we're framed almost exactly the same. And, and this our is backgrounds what, are almost the same too. <laughs> you know, I love it. Yes, we're professional. So, the headspace, very, very little headspace, you know, you want to be able to have a little bit of motion without cutting, you know, cutting your face off or anything like that. But at the same time, you want the focus to be on your face, specifically your eyes. So the more of your head that's in, you know, your frame, the better it is. I say as a rule of thumb, you want to cut off somewhere in the chest area. If you go too close, it can get a little personal. <laughs> um, and then if you get too far away, you start to lose a little bit of the intimacy of the scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I say somewhere around the chest area, taking into consideration whatever you're wearing. If you're wearing like a super low cut, then you'll look naked if you're too close. So, yeah. you know, women, if you do your hair a certain way, um, yeah, somewhere around this ballpark is good. Mm -hmm. Eyeline is going to be just slightly off camera. So not into camera because when you watch television, they rarely speak into the camera. 
it's going to be just off to the side. So whoever your dialogue is with that character, you can have your reader stand just off to the side of the camera. So it's very organic and natural talking to them. If there's more than two characters, you can have character A here, character B here, you know, and then you can use these imaginary eye lines as your reference points. It can get a little strange if the scene calls for, let's say you're in the car and you'd be driving and you'd be like, yeah, but then they can't see anything of you. So even here, you would still kind of cheat this way. It seems a little awkward, but this is the way that you'll be able to, they'll be able to assess your performance. Oh, the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as what to wear goes, uh, so general rules of thumb about wardrobe, you want to try and avoid whites, blacks, reds, and greens. Whites and blacks because it kind of messes with the white balance and um, just the color saturation of your computer or your camera, whatever. <laughs> um, reds and greens also tend to play a little funny with your skin tone. You might notice sometimes you'll wear a red shirt and depending on the camera, sometimes it'll look orange, sometimes it'll look pink, sometimes mm -hmm. it'll look purple. General rule of thumb, you stay away from those. Same with tight patterns. Um, tight oh, stripes yeah. or uh, spots and stuff like that, it can create a, an effect called more and that can be distracting. So anything that you wouldn't naturally wear in front of a camera on, you know, on, on set, then don't wear it for your audition. Um, exceptions being if it calls for it. Like if you're uh, auditioning for the role of a doctor and you have a white coat, yeah, wear a white coat, you know. Um, Costumes, you don't have to get full in costume for it. Um, wear something that kind of suggests it. If you have an appropriate outfit, go for it. You know, if you're going out for a role of a businessman, wear a suit. Don't wear like, you know, a tank top and <laughs> and try and play a businessman doing that. It's not as common. <laughs> you want to help the casting director as much as possible in imagining you as the perfect person for this role. So if they turn on the TV or turn on the uh your tape and your boom all of a sudden you're already in character it's so much easier for them props are usually a no they're more often than not distracting and um, the only exception that i've heard is a cell phone is an acceptable prop i say no props no props at all um especially weapons don't use a prop gun <laughs> yes. oh my you know just imagine and like pantomime and uh and um, you can make some adjustments within the script too. You know, like if it's a dinner scene, if it's a dinner conversation in the script, it's like you're eating throughout this thing. Don't feel like you have to pantomime that you're eating while you're filming this audition. You know, maybe at the top of the scene, have a little button where you're, mm -hmm. then let it go, you know, because otherwise it's just going to become distracting unless it directly um, carries the scene. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Like if you're yeah. drinking something and then you, you spit it because someone else says something really funny. Um, but you pantomime all of that. Don't use any props. What about um, movement? If it's a scene that maybe they're supposed to be in a fight or, you know, mm -hmm. cop, mm -hmm. a, a chase down or something like that. The best advice is on a case by case basis, tease out what is essential for carrying the story for that particular scene. It goes back to like I was saying about like eating at the dinner table, you know, only do the parts that are essential. Everything else, reserve it for a button at the top of the scene or maybe a button at the very end of the scene just so you establish what's going on. But it's a little much to be doing it throughout. Mm -hmm. um, like running is an example. Maybe instead of running throughout the whole thing, you run into the scene, you know, you run into the scene and you just, <sighs> right? Mm -hmm. And then you do your dialogue. If it's a fighting situation, yeah, feel free to throw in a jab here or there, but like most of the other stuff should be pretty still, you mm -hmm. know? You don't want to be trying to talk while you're doing all this right. crazy movement because then they won't be able to assess your acting. Mm -hmm. And what about the lines? Should the lines be memorized every single time? In the ideal situation, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I know sometimes we get last minute auditions and it's like, oh, I need to memorize five pages by tomorrow or more. I don't think anyone out there is going to fault you if you're not 100% off book. Mm -hmm. But just keep in mind, the more off book you are, the better your performance is going to be. And also the better you're going to compare to other actors who are not off book. Mm -hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of casting directors 
want you to hold your sides or don't care if you hold your sides, I should say. Um, you know, everyone has their preference, of course, but as a general rule of thumb for a taped audition, if you're holding your sides, it's not the worst thing in the world. Just have them in your hand as a just in case, as a backup, but then be so off book that you never have to use them. During a self-tape audition, should you sit, stand? Should you enter at the beginning, exit at the end? Do what feels right for the scene. You know, if you're driving in a car and having a conversation, feel free to sit. If you're, um, you know, you're having some other scene with intense conversations, sit, stand, whatever you feel most comfortable with. They say that if you are seated for an audition, you're naturally going to be a little bit more still, which could work to your benefit. Sometimes people are nervous like fidgeters and will shift their weight all the time. And, you know, that might help kind of stabilize you. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, do what's right for the scene. Okay, and then slates. So slates is going to be a 100% uh, follow the directions as to what they're asking for because every slate is different. Um, sometimes they don't even ask you for a slate. And if they don't ask you for a slate, don't feel pressure to have to give one to them. Um, a standard slate is just going to be a straight into camera saying this kind of framing unless otherwise noted. And it'll just be your name, your height, Sometimes they'll ask you for your location. Sometimes they'll ask you for availability. Sometimes they'll ask you for a full body shot or a pan. Um, sometimes they'll ask for profiles. It really just depends. So just follow the directions of what they're asking for. And let's say now we have filmed our audition. How do you choose which one to send? And do you send more than one tape? Um, send the one that you feel best about. Send the one that you feel highlights your performance the best. You know, if it's a comedy, like, which ones have the best beats to it, you know? If it's a drama, which are you most authentic and convincing in? Whatever you feel most comfortable about. So as far as sending more than one goes, if you can do it in two different ways, different is the key word there. You wanna do different takes because you wanna be able to show range and you wanna be able to show versatility. With that being said, not every casting director likes two takes. So a lot of times the directions will tell you just send one. If it's a shorter audition, like less than a page, send two. And then once you do choose your takes, how much of it do you edit and how do you edit them? As little as possible, honestly. Mm -hmm. The only amount of editing that I say is one, make sure that the volume is good because you want to make sure that they can hear you properly. Sometimes the volume is too low and you just bump it up. If you're taping it yourself, I would remove the little bits in the front and the end where you're like turning the camera on and yeah. off or walking into frame that's not in character, right? Um, you want the beginning and end of your self-tape audition to be as if it were the scene. Mm -hmm. So start with the beat where the scene would start, end it on a beat where the scene would end. Mm -hmm. um, don't do all this fancy cutting and editing in between, like you're trying to make it a movie already. That's mm -hmm. not what they're after. They literally just want to see this, Sorry, I'm like looking at the camera. They just want to see the performance all the way through. How should you label your self-tape audition? How should you just send it? The way to label it, follow directions. Mm -hmm. The standard way is make sure that your name is on it and make sure that the character name is on it. A lot of times casting directors are casting for more than one role at a time. You know, think of any sort of television episode or a movie. Obviously, there's more than one character. So submit, your, submit it with your name, hyphen, or an underscore character name. Sometimes they'll ask for more information, follow directions. Mm -hmm. but as long as your name is on it, they'll know who it belongs to if they're interested. File sizes can get really, really large, especially for longer videos. If you're saving something on like iMovie, for example, if it's a longer file piece, medium resolution is totally fine. You don't need to record it and send it in 4K. Mm -hmm. And what if you miss the deadline? Is there anything you can do? <laughs> really no. <laughs> um, usually no. Deadlines exist for a reason. Um, and a lot of times, don't even wait till the last minute because casting directors, they review tapes on a rolling basis. Meaning if they submit something on a Monday and the deadline is Friday, they're going to start watching tapes as soon as people bring the tape. You know, yeah. yeah, as soon as they finish with that day's worth of work and they're going to sit down and they're going to start watching tapes. It has happened where if you submit a tape, early enough and they like you, they might send you a redirect via callback, mm -hmm. a callback tape, you know? So they'll say, this was great. Can you do it this way? Deadline is still Friday. So if you send it by Wednesday, you have time to do that. And that's great. That's really, really great. Cause that gets you one step closer to being exactly what they're looking for. 
Mm -hmm. And that's something that I personally am always open to whenever my agents mm -hmm. send me anything. I send it over and I'm like, let me know if you need me to reshoot mm -hmm. it, anything. I'm always like, I'm yeah. available to to do any changes right, right. Have that in person. And I can't tell you how many times last minute there might be technical difficulties, you know, like maybe something happens and your file is corrupt. Maybe you have to retape it. Maybe you have to redownload it. Maybe um, so many people are waiting last minute to upload their video that the site crashes or the download, the seat, the speed of, um, you know, uploading is too slow. Professional Hollywood level casting offices will not take anything beyond their deadline because they're on a time crunch too. They're on a very tight schedule. Okay. So now we went through pretty much everything. So any <laughs> tips, anything additional that you want to Add. Yeah. So, um, just little things, little techniques and tips and tricks that would help set your self tape audition apart. The production quality of it is one big thing. If you're, like I said, if you're recording it in really dim lights and, you know, in front of a dirty kitchen and stuff like that, they're already going to be biased the moment they, they see it. So just having a nice, clean, professional looking setup is going to be great. Um, if you have lights that are um, movable, you know, not like the ceiling lights, but like, let's say you have a lamp or let's say you have your soft boxes, make sure you put them in front of you. And if you have them at eye level, you'll be able to catch like the little catch lights in your eye. And that's something that really helps transmit the emotions and the, uh, your acting really kind of goes up another level. If you can see the catch lights, it's the same reason why in headshots, like they really want to see your eyes. As far as the performance goes, I talked about this really briefly before, but have a button um, in the beginning of the scene and at the end of the scene. So let's say your line is, are you sure you want to do that? Like the camera turns on, it's like, are you sure you want to do that? That's fine. But what if you had a little something that establishes the scene before you say the line, like you're responding to something, right? So have a reaction, have a moment, do something. What is your character doing at that moment? be doing it when the camera turns on. Have an action, an unspoken action at the beginning of the scene and at the end of the scene. And that's really going to help tie in this, it's going to create this world that you are trying to make for your casting director. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that definitely goes for in-person auditions too. I mm -hmm. see a lot of actors who like speed through their slate and then start their monologue. And I'm like, wait, tell me what just happened to you. Yeah. What's about mm -hmm. to happen. I want to see the story because I only get to see a little tiny bit. So yeah. It's definitely a good one. Give it a moment to breathe, you know, give it a moment to like get into character. I mean, don't spend 10 seconds like in silence trying to do something, but right. <laughs> you know, give it a second, let it breathe. Um, and then the last thing I would say is as part of your script homework, you know, not just memorizing your lines, but pick it apart, you know, not just your character, like, oh, how is they, how are they feeling at this point? What do they mean when they say this? That's all homework. But when you're self-taping, also establish how many people am I talking to? What is my relationship with them? Like, what's my reaction to them? And where are they in proximity to like where my eyeline should be? Mm -hmm. um, same goes for if you're referencing locations or things. Um, you need to already establish like, how does this imaginary world how is it laid out for the camera for the audition and so when you go and you do your audition you're not like clipping or you know like you're not turning away from camera you practice and get better at because self-taping is going to be something we're going to be doing for a while mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I'm really excited about that it's more and more self mm -hmm. auditions just because although I love in-person auditions it's going to open up opportunities for a lot more people of course, of course yeah especially for people who don't live in LA you know or or you have a day job I think self-tape is going to be one thing that just makes our job so much easier because we're going to have the time to prepare the time to get it right and the time to do it on our own time yeah I think that's about it <laughs> Her out and thank you guys so much for watching and you know that at the end of every video I feature another channel and today of course I'm going to go feature Jackie's channel so you guys can see her reels on there see her in action and if you want to be featured on my next video make sure you are subscribed like this video and leave me a comment